Um, you were filming that, weren't you? Damn Heck yeah. you. Heck yeah. What's up, guys? I hope you've enjoyed my channel so far. We're going to add a new segment to this channel called Sunday Wrap-Up. Now, we're going to talk about all things that have happened this past week in the entertainment business, mainly all the movie stuff. We're also going to bring in some older movie reviews, as well as movies that came out about a month ago. We'll start off with movie news this week. The biggest news of the week is Kevin Spacey and his movie, All the Money in the World. Now, Ridley Scott is going to do six weeks worth of reshoots to replace all of Kevin Spacey's scenes with a different actor. Because of all the sexual allegations that are going on, uh, Louis C. K. just came out recently. I, I'm kind of sad to hear all of these people uh, that are getting in trouble with Hollywood and sexual harassment. That really sucks, and I'm kind of disappointed. Who knows when this movie will be released now, probably maybe in February, but it was going to be a contender for the Oscar, but now that they're doing six weeks with the reshoots, we'll see what happens. I was, I was really looking forward, not really looking forward to this film, the thing that made me want to see All the Money in the World was Kevin Spacey. And now that this happened, I'm kind of like, uh. In other more exciting news, Kathleen Kennedy just came out recently and said that Ryan Johnson will be creating a new Star Wars trilogy after Episode 9. Now, Ryan Johnson has already said that they're going to do a clean slate. It's going to have nothing to do with the trilogy that we are currently in now. It'll be exciting to see what they will do. A lot of people want to do a Knights of the Old Republic kind of thing, but a lot of people, including me, think that would be better as a Netflix TV kind of show. Who knows what they're going to do next with this? I am looking forward to seeing Ryan Johnson for episode 8, and I think it'll be a very good and fantastic film. I can't wait to see what he's going to do with the new trilogy. If you haven't seen any of Ryan Johnson's uh, recent films, I would suggest watching Looper with, um, what's his name, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis. That's a fantastic film. I would watch that just to get a, an idea of what his films are kind of like. So, I'm excited to see where this is going to go. <laughs> Very funny, Mark. <laughs> I can't wait to see the disaster artist, by the way. Also, in other news, Disney just bought 20th century, 21st century Fox now. Uh, they didn't actually buy it out, but they took certain properties like X-Men, Fantastic Four. Now we could possibly see X-Men and Fantastic Four in the Marvel MCU. Now they would probably, most likely, yes, they will be rebooted because it wouldn't make sense continuity-wise because X-Men is already a huge mess of continuity anyways. They would probably, most likely, they will do a reboot. It'll be interesting to see who a new Wolverine will be. And also, again, like I said, they did not buy out 21st Century Fox because that would be considered a monopoly. Now we're going to be talking about some older movies. The first movie I do want to talk about, this came out back in 2007, I believe, is David Fincher's Zodiac. This is my favorite David Fincher film. Um, it has Mark Ruffalo, Jake Gyllenhaal, and Robert Downey Jr. And it's about the, the Zodiac murders that happened mainly all the 70s. And it's about Jake Gyllenhaal's character, who is a cartoonist, who ends up being fascinated by the Zodiac killer killings, and he decides to actually kind of take his own part in it and investigate. And he actually writes a book at the end. It's a real book. It's a really good movie. David Fincher has really good sweeping shots. Um, this is one of those movies where once you see it, you want to do more research on it. You know, after I saw this movie, I've watched this movie multiple times, and each time I watch it, I just become fascinated with the Zodiac killings. And it's, it's so interesting, they never really fully caught who did it. They have a certain idea about three people, they have a certain idea about which one it was. And this film kind of points to one specific person. But it is, again, one of those movies where after you see it, you really want to do your own research and investigations. It's a fascinating film. I highly recommend it if you're a David Fincher fan. And you've probably already seen it if you're a David Fincher fan. Another film that I didn't get to see in the main theaters was Annabelle Creations. Luckily, we have a dollar theater, so I can catch a lot of older movies. And I'll try and fit these movies into our, what, weekly wrap-up, Sunday wrap-up thing that we're doing now. Annabelle Creations. Uh, if you've seen the first Annabelle movie, it was garbage, it was awful, it was just terrible. This one actually was kind of a step up, and it takes place before the first Annabelle movie, so it's a, it's a prequel to a prequel of The Conjuring, I guess. It's about these, these group of orphan girls 
who move into this house with this family. The family, their daughter had died years before, and you know, they have this, the original Annabelle doll, and creepy things start to happen from there. Now, this movie was better than the first movie, the first Annabelle movie, but it still had its problems. Tons of jump scares. I can't stand jump scares. I think they are the laziest, laziest thing in a horror movie. It's not scary, it's just, it's just loud noises in my ears that makes me jump. I'm not a big fan of it, but this movie did have some creepy imagery where I went to, you know, close my eyes that night to go to sleep and I kind of, you know, saw those images in my head that kind of creeped me out a little bit. So they did good in some, some aspects of the movies, but other than that, and, and by the way, the last 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes of the film, uh, of the, the climax of the movie dragged on way too long. It, the camera would jump from character to character in different locations of the house or around the house and each time they would be stuck in a room and this would happen for each character at least three different times where they'd be stuck in a room hiding in a corner, right? And they'd hear a creepy noise and say this is like a chair I'm like right here and they, they would kind of look they don't really see anything they go back, right? Look again Nothing's there, right? Go ahead. Look again. Ah, jump scare! Right? And it just... And, and they did this like five or six different times throughout the, the climax of the film. And it got so old. I was just... And the entire time I'm sitting in it here, right? I don't like jump scares. I think they're cheap. And the entire time I'm, I'm closing my eyes like this. And, and no, I'm not really closing my eyes. I'm keeping them open, but closing my ears. Because I don't like the jump scares. And I so I couldn't really enjoy the film. So... The movie, Annabelle Creations, if I had to give it a score out of uh, what, five stars, I'd probably give it a three. A three out of five. That's decent. And it connects perfectly into the first Annabelle movie, like right in, and it kind of made me like it a little bit more. Alright guys, that was our Sunday wrap up. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll do plenty of more in the future. I just want to go ahead and let you guys know some upcoming things that we will be doing. There's really only one thing I can think of. December 8th, I hope I can upload on December 8th, I want to review Where the Light Is. I am a big John Mayer fan. I own the movie. It's an entire concert. I'm going to rewatch it again. I'm going to review it. Let you guys know what I think of it. Um, so that will be coming up soon. If you like this video, give it a like and a share. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and follow me at LittleSpreck on Twitter. Alright guys, that's all I got for you today. See you next time.